It's not every day, let's do the well, let's go do a <laughs> workshop. Mm -hmm. Global health can have drama, uh -huh. can have passion. Uh -huh. you know Ginger. 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 <laughs> and I think what I find really impressive is how the show seamlessly blends entertainment with mm. critical health messages. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Controversial opinion. I think Africa by now would probably look like Wakanda if it was not for men like Wahidi's father. I feel like we would have forget. <laughs> Hello Globies, welcome to the World Health Investigation Podcast. My name is Jocelyn. I'm Edna. We are Young Global Health Professionals and your hosts for the World Health Investigation Podcast. Also known as the WHI, we will be discussing all things global health, unpacking the most controversial health and social issues, as well as promoting new wave global health development and equity. So, Adina, tell me what's the tea today? What's the global health tea? Of course, we have some news headlines for you guys. And we thought since we're coming to the end of the year, can you believe it? <laughs> 2023 believe is it. over. It's over. And yeah. your skin is glowing, by the way. Oh, thank you. So it's yours. <laughs> I'm trying to you. get like you. Get a popping. You know? <laughs> So yes, we thought we would do a nice news roundup just mm -hmm. to see what has been going on in the year. So here are the top five news headlines that stood out to us in 2023. Let's start with number one, number one, number one. Back in October, the WHO recommended a new malaria vaccine for children. Wow. The R21 vaccine, which is the second one recommended by the WHO, has been shown to be safe and effective in preventing malaria in children and is promising significant public health benefits. Okay, mm -hmm. we love to see it. It's Absolutely. about time. It's about time. You know, because I think it's very important that we give these mosquitoes a taste of their own medicine. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> just get her. So her and her dry Ooh. jokes. <laughs> It was so good. Now, number two, Ozempic, Ozempic, Ozempic. But, uh, this was the year for Ozempic. Okay. We even had countries like Germany, the UK, and USA mm. reporting shortages of the anti diabetes drug mm. due to its popularity for weight loss. From Elon Musk to Oprah, it feels like everybody and their mama was on Ozempic. They're trying to get their waist snatched. So um, <laughs> more over fashion influencers, because this is an era for the influencers, oh right? Oh my days. <laughs> now on to number three. The conflict, unfortunately, between Israel and the occupied Palestinian territory escalated when Hamas launched a multifaceted attack on the 7th of October 2023. This led to a devastating humanitarian crisis in Gaza, with Israel responding through airstrikes and a total blockade and prevented entry of food, water, medicine and electricity into the Gaza Strip. Of course, many of you must be aware of this one. And that also means we cannot forget all the ongoing crises around the world. We'll give some of them some honorable mentions. We can't go into details, but obviously we need to recognize the crises that are happening in the Democratic Republic of Congo, mm. South Sudan and South Sudan, Yemen and Syria as well. Mm -hmm. These conflicts um, have these conflicts are exposing millions of civilians to mm. violence, economic pressures, mm. displacement, and disease outbreaks. And finally, number five, on a brighter note, 2023 witnessed the approval of the first gene therapy to cure sickle cell anemia. Wow. And that's in the USA and in the UK. And okay. up until now, the cure was only available by bone marrow transplant for oh. a donor. But this gene editing therapy removes the need for donors so this groundbreaking treatment does come with a hefty price Ugh. yeah though with costing up to two million us dollars per person Jeez, That's two a lot million of money. dollars yeah it's possible to get some kind of like discount code I'm not or sure something about that. When it comes to <laughs> <laughs> but truly i think this is a promising step given that sickle cell as we know typically uh, is very common in people of African and Caribbean descent. And that does it for our 2023 news roundup. 
Wow. That's been a year. Wow. What a time, what a year. Now on to the juices, juices, back yeah. of the episode. Come on, girl. Okay. Talk to us all. Today, something a little different. <laughs> We're actually going to be diving into something that's both captivating and crucial. Mm. The latest season of MTV Sugar. Oh my days. I, I love me some MTV Sugar. I love MTV. <laughs> We've been fans of We've MTV fans. Sugar, okay? And it surprisingly has some global health insights, you know? Absolutely, Edna. Listen, y'all. Yeah. MTV Sugar has been pushing boundaries Facts. and opening conversations, weaving sexual and reproductive health into gripping fictional realities. So grab your popcorns, Globies. Yeah. Get your popcorn ASAP. ASAP. <laughs> if you haven't watched it, I don't know what you've been doing. Mm. Okay. So this season takes us on an even wilder ride, though. And we're in Nigeria, tackling everything from family dynamics, mm. love, mm. sex, even mm. good old COVID-19. Yeah. From navigating, you know, abuse to challenging gender stereotypes, mm -hmm. the show fearlessly explores these tough issues. It's like they're handing out life lessons with every episode, you know? Yeah, I, I, I'm always learning something new, personally. Same, same. Um, So you're absolutely right. And I think what I find really impressive is how the show seamlessly blends entertainment with mm. critical health messages. Yeah. It's like having your favorite drama series that suddenly <laughs> goes to medical school and gets a PhD in raising awareness. Come on, sis. Get your degree. <laughs> And you know us, we mm. love a good dose of drama mixed with a little bit of education, you mm. know? It's like hiding veggies in a delicious smoothie. You don't know it's good for you until it hits you. <laughs> Who has these veggies in a smoothie at the... I do. So you People gonna are healthy. You gotta put a broccoli in your smoothie. Why not? <laughs> okay, okay, <laughs> sure, I'll take it. So this is very sneaky, but it's effective. Yeah. In fact, a World Bank study of MTV Sugar showed us that individuals who wanted or who watched the show were 35% more likely to get tested for HIV, mm -hmm. and the prevalence of chlamydia was 58% lower amongst them. Look at that! So we got some stats. You know what I mean? Up while we're doing this home you here. know, and I think this is a nice reminder to all of us that it's not every day. Let's do the well. Let's go do a workshop. <laughs> mm -hmm. Global health can have drama. Passion. So for real, let's talk about the show. And of course, spoiler alert, if you haven't watched the show, get caught up on MTV Sugar Night Jack season five, hit pause, binge watch, and then come back and join us right here. Because trust us, it's gonna be worth it. It is a very worth it. Right, so just an overview of the plot. So like I said, this season we are back in Lagos with a new cast of characters, a mm. new fresh cast. I mean, some people come back, but yeah. See. MTV Sugar follows the stories of different characters and the show doesn't really have one main character yeah. but we can start with Mohini Ooh, Ooh. I love Mohini she is literally hashtag black women in tech come on yeah because, <laughs> you know I identify a lot with her she just finished her degree in IT mm. and has been working at her little job at the youth hub and the youth hub this season is just like a recreational center for the youth that's where they all go to hang out you know mm. after school when they have nothing to do mm -hmm. and Mohina is like that smart friend who kind of doubts herself and sometimes just needs a little push mm. so her co-workers convince her to enter into a competition to create an app and potentially win $10,000. Thing is though, her parents have other plans for her. Mm. One day, she mm. just comes back home after a day of black girl magic things and mm. finds out that her parents are talking to a landlord. Huh. And boom! They tell her she has to marry him. 
Oh my days. Excuse me? This was like the most devastating thing I watched. Like, pardon? Can you, excuse me? <laughs> you can imagine, the because Mo is only 15 years old mm -hmm. and she just comes in and there's this man, big man sitting big there, man. grinning, ready to take his wife. Uncle! Imagine, uncle. Uncle. Oh, uncle, full beard and everything, <laughs> you know? So, Mo's story this season is really about, you know, navigating arranged, uh, forced marriage, Loki, mm. yeah. Next up, we have our girl, Simi, mm. who is actually a returning character. Yeah. She gets herself in a sticky situation. Mm. Well, a love triangle situation. Mm. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, if I remember correctly, Simi was actually on the previous season, mm -hmm. and she used to be, she used to date, what's his name? Wasu. 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 She used to date Wasu, yeah. right? And what you gave her HIV? Bruh. Yeah. So I think what happened was at the time when they were all in secondary school, Wasu didn't know his HIV status. Yeah. So then they ended up having sex and yeah. So she kind of blames Wasu for that. Mm -hmm. But by fate, he comes back to this youth hub. So they end up working at the youth hub together. Mm -hmm. And he's like coming in all like, oh, I've changed, you Acting know. I'm like a better man. I'm a better man. I take my <laughs> meds. You know, I'm just more careful, you know? I can't take him seriously. No, I can never. No, I can't never. Take <laughs> I can take him seriously. seriously. Um, but then the other part of the life triangle is mm -hmm. sweet, sweet Nasir. Uh, <laughs> you know, Nasir, you know. You're saying his name with a little too much grin on your I'm face. I'm just Nasir. capturing the essence of the show <laughs> the for show. those that haven't watched it. Mm. She's like a handsome architect. Oh, mm -hmm. she, just, kind of. she just comes to the youth hub and is like, yes, I'm just going to fix everything. And, da, 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 da. and yeah. Simi, obviously, she's taken by him. And he also ends up liking her as well. Like, yeah. So they start dating, right? They start dating. She's yeah. a bit scared to tell him her HIV status. Yeah. Unfortunately, she ends up getting intimate with him yeah, before yeah, even yeah. telling him. Mm. And that creates a bit of chaos, a bit of drama. A bit of drama, as you can imagine. Um, who else is there? Who else was there? Oh, there was Halil and Praise. Yes, that Ish. toxic, abusive, domestic, violence initiated relationship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, very chaotic. Um, so it starts because Halil, she at the very beginning we see her, she just comes in, she has this like shoulder injury, mm -hmm. and everyone's like, Halil, what's going on? She's like, Oh, I fell on the stairs, or I hit the door, or something, some some BS. Mm -hmm. Um, and then eventually the whole story just like escalates, and yeah, all the different characters are obviously kind of sensing what's going on, and they just try to sort of like encourage her to stand up. Mm -hmm. to praise and even to get, give you even more tea this waste man <laughs> has no job oh, okay oh God. <laughs> he has no job she wants to go and split her salary with him yeah. and begs her employer to hire him on her salary yeah and he still beats her at home imagine imagine he was all like for me i think with him it's like the way he just like twist things and manipulate oh, them geez. it was it was he bad y'all it's just very bad y'all mm -hmm. so i think that's just like an overview yeah. of the plot i think that's something i think cool. we'll probably get into more of the characters and a little bit more story details as we go along mm -hmm. because we've prepared a very special game for you guys okay i'm ready to play you're ready to play i'm ready to play so essentially what we've done is we've allocated different global health related awards okay. for different characters and we're each gonna give our opinion of who we think deserves the award. Okay. So you're all ready? Like, let's, let's go, let's go, let's all go, right. let's go, let's go, I'm ready. Okay, so the first award is the Advocate Award and we Ooh. want to give this to the character who champions health and well-being um. the most. So mm. Justin, who's your pick? Oh, I think this one is easy for me. You know that girl that fights for COVID-19? Oh. Awareness. What's her name? Oh, Flip. <laughs> Isn't it like... Kochi... Uh -huh. I forgot her name as well. But she... We're, we're going to put her name on there for you to see. Yeah, yeah. But she is literally this girl. Yeah, I think she lost her dad due to COVID. Yeah. And her mom does not believe COVID exists. Um, she thinks that he died because the current, the self isolation in quarantine in the center basically killed him. Yeah. Um, but she does not let that go. She you know. really advocates for people having sanitizing their hands, and she has a whole YouTube channel, and she really goes on social media to raise awareness on you know better yeah. sanitation. Yeah. For people. Yeah, I think that's a solid pick. I think that's a solid pick. Mm -hmm. You wanna know my pick? Who's your pick? 
My pick is that uncle that works at the youth hub. I'm also forgetting his name, right? Um, and you know, I'm normally not all about awarding men for just doing the bare minimum. But you know, I think <laughs> we need to, you know, realize that in different contexts, you know, things like gender issues, mm-hmm. you know, even the idea of suggesting that women are equal to men, it's a bit radical in yeah, some places, it's a bit it's radical. Too radical. So in many I, places. I give mm-hmm. this man the award because essentially you see a couple of scenes with him where he's talking to another one of the characters and the character comes up, he's like, Oh, this is what I'm seeing in my household. Why does my dad treat my sisters this way and that way? And he just kind of like talks him through very gently, you know, just kind of like, don't you think women and men are equal? And just kind of helps him just understand gender issues in a very like cool, calm, casual way. Cool uncle type vibe. So yeah. I give my word to him. Yes, I, I, I like that one. Because yeah. there's, there's this particular scene where, uh, um, what's the main character's name again? Mo? Mo. Yeah, yeah. Mo's younger brother and sibling, yeah. they're fighting for meat <laughs> in oh, a pot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the, one of the early scenes. And the father automatically says that um, the guy, the brother, should get the meat. Meanwhile, the girl, the sister, mm. had it first. Yeah. So basically saying that, oh, yeah, he, he deserves it better because he just needs it better. He just deserves to get it. Because he's a guy. Because he's a guy. That's it. <laughs> Can you imagine? Yeah. Um, okay. So our next category, mm-hmm. we have the drama doctor. <laughs> okay. This is the character that you thought had the most intense and engaging storyline. Who do you give that to? Oh my days, and I put me on the spot here. Yeah, I, I know mine already. <laughs> the most engaging and drama centric well, character. Who is like the most dramatic person? Who is like the most drama? I would say either I'm torn between Was You mm. and the girl that got pregnant. Amen. That's my <laughs> pick as well. <laughs> Her name is Nanya. Nanya. I had this written mm. down. So Nanya is actually Mohini's little sister as well. Yeah. And she was my baby because see Nanya is like she's like that's it girl. You yeah. know, she's trying to do big girl things. Yeah. Even though she's like sixteen years old. Sixteen years old. Like she's coming to school, she has like booty shorts underneath her uniform. <laughs> Afterwards, after school, she just goes She's to the ready club. She's ready to party, drop it low. Drop it low, but <laughs> the girl goes from an HIV scare to a pregnancy scare. Mm. It's just a mess. I said, this one is a drama queen. I, I do give it up to her because yeah. she does try to be safe in everything she does. Yeah. Though she had the pregnancy scare, she was trying to get condoms. <laughs> no, it's true, it's true. She didn't try to get condoms. She was trying to get it on the low, low. Yeah. Asking for a friend, mm. um, <laughs> but she did. She did try. Yeah, I, I, I think. Yeah, she didn't do too bad after all. Okay, so our final category now, the health hazard. Ooh. Mm? This is the person that is an enemy of public health progress. Mm. Which character do you think caused the most harm to public health? Our uh, init- initially, when you ask when you ask me that question right yeah, now, yeah. I automatically think. The mother that Ooh. was preventing her daughter from spreading HIV, I'm um, sorry, COVID-19 awareness. Mm. But okay. I think the real hazard is that landlord. Oh, okay. okay. He is a la- he's a hazard to women. Yeah. A hazard to children, forcing people into child marriage. Mm. That's a hazard. Yeah. That's a hazard. That's a big hazard. That's a hazard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, my pick is also along the same lines. It is actually the father. <laughs> Mohini's mm. father. Mm. Because I'm like, mm. he was the one championing, championing this marriage. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. A- controversial opinion. I think Africa by now would probably look like Wakanda if it was not for men like Mohini's father. I feel like we would have forgotten. <laughs> I feel like we would have progressed so much by now. I think people are gonna get triggered by this comment. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. He yeah. and, and then and then to make matters worse, because I guess spoiler alert, in the end Mohini just like stands Since, up for herself. Mm-hmm. And then the twist is father goes back to landlord and says, and in fact, has, I have another one for you. Just take the other one. The sister. Nanya. Sixteen years old. Sixteen years old. He says take her too. And that means this same landlord was eyeing Mo from the age he was eyeing her from when she was a child because now she's 19 right yeah. he says I have been paying your rent mm. you have not paid rent for the past 5 years mm. so that means 5 years 19 minus 5 eh? 
She was 14. 14. 14, you are already yeah. eyeing her. Are you not yeah. embarrassed? Are you not embarrassed? And yeah, I think it's for me just the fact that the father is just happy to go along with the agenda. With the agenda. And I'm like, maybe you could try other means of supporting your family. But he says, no, 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 no. Let them just go. And I, can we just talk about the fact that he wants to live rent free off of his daughters? But I'm like, is that, what is that about? Yeah. As the head of a family, mm. uh, what is your role? Okay, let's just assume that. Let me just dive here. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go assume on, that, like, as a man, right, you're, you have a gender role right here to protect your family and to keep them safe. Mm -hmm. And you want to exchange your daughter in exchange for rent. And you're not protecting her. Yeah. Who is meant to protect her? Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. In fact, instead of asking his son, like, oh, can you help around the house? house. Or even encouraging the daughters to, like, actually go out and work more. And work. Get work. He says, no, let me just sell them away. So. It doesn't sit well with my spirits. No comments. So I think that's just like an overview of mm -hmm. many of the characters. Mm -hmm. Now I also did have some specific questions, I guess, as I was watching along, and I'm wondering what your thoughts were. Yeah. And obviously Globies as well. You know, if you're playing along the game, let us know what you thought. What were your picks? Yes, comment you, below. Yeah. Do you have any hot takes? So my first question is around the COVID-19 storyline, which you already mentioned a little bit. Mm -hmm. Did you find that it was integrated seamlessly or did it feel more forced? Uh, <laughs> to be honest, yeah. I watched this season twice. Mm. I'm not going to lie. The first time it felt a little bit forced. Yeah. It felt a little bit forced because as much as the young girl recently lost her father and she's very emotional about it it's a bit <laughs> odd to see uh, a young student advocating for sanitation in a school mm. it's quite because if you look at it carefully if, if it was either like a medical professional that happened to witness the death of the father and wanted to mobilize students mm. that would seem a bit more like okay that's the medical professional doing realistic. it realistic realistic yeah but to see a young student um raising awareness for COVID 19 at a school and everyone's making fun of her i mean i get it to me i can learn from it mm. but it doesn't seem too natural yeah I agree with you. I don't think it was like the most natural thing. Mm -hmm. I appreciate the intention behind it because I'm just mm -hmm. glad they didn't have to like go deep into like, oh, the con the pandemic was so horrible, mm -hmm. the mental health impact, blah, blah, blah. it just kind of mm -hmm. went into like, okay, here's one character. Mm -hmm. This is how it's impacted her family. Um, but I think what I liked most about that storyline was more so just a general reminder to people that COVID-19 is still out there. It's still out people there. still can get infections. Even now in 2023, December, people are starting to get infected more. More. Um, and yeah, just a reminder that even if you were not vaccinated when COVID was at its peak, you can still get vaccinated now. So mm -hmm. just a little public health message in there. Oh, I agree. I yeah. agree. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> The next thing I was wondering about is obviously MTV Sugar. When it when it started out, it was mostly about just like HIV and sexual health issues. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering what you thought about how they just handled conversations around HIV, sexual health, relationships. How did you feel about how it was handled this season? I think MTV does MTV Sugar does it really well. Mm. I think when it comes to sexual health public health engagement, mm. top notch. COVID-19 yeah. didn't seem too natural, yeah. but the sexual health content, I love the fact that the teachers were the ones that were educating the students. Mm. I think they should keep a similar <laughs> approach when it comes to things like COVID-19. Yeah. Um, with the sexual health, I think um, it's, it's, it's in our society, right? In the West, yeah. there's not that much stigma when it comes to I don't know, accessing things like condoms. There is, but it's not yeah. as much as someone <clears throat> like in Nigeria. Yeah. Um, so I, I can understand why the students would act that way around the nurses, mm. how uncomfortable they are. And I feel like I also learned quite a lot in that process. <laughs> <laughs> I learned quite passively. a lot passively. Yeah. Um, so I think it, 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 they did quite a good job. I'm not going to lie. I don't think, um, I don't have much negative... I don't have many negative comments to say. Yeah. No, I agree with you. I feel like 
having seen like all the other previous seasons as well because we're a little obsessed Mm -hmm. (laughs) um i feel like for me i've noticed i feel like a shift between earlier on when you would see way more of the like this is sort of what people can expect when they you know go to get tested for hiv and mm-hmm. then they have like a counseling session with like a medical doctor and all of these things yeah but i think what i appreciated this season is it deals more i guess with like the day-to-day person's like um reality mm-hmm. more so the people living with hiv yeah uh, especially through simi storyline with mm-hmm. nasir yes. Uh, I think she has a crush going. Uh, no, no, no. No, no, no. I just <laughs> <laughs> no, I think what I liked about it is like, you know, the reality is people living with HIV. There's millions of people living with HIV across the world. Mm-hmm. And they date, they get into relationships, sometimes in relationships with people who are not living with HIV. Mm-hmm. And I can see why it would be like an uncomfortable conversation to have. Because yeah. imagine, you know, when you're first dating someone trying to be all cute you're not trying to you're just you trying know, to bring disease in the picture you know you're just you're just like i want to be on my best behavior on my best already behavior. so it's tricky to just bring up like your yeah. hiv status so mm-hmm. i can understand why simi and maybe others um in, who find themselves in her shoes yeah and they approach things in that way but i guess i liked how their story ended because when she does tell nasir about her status for him it wasn't even an issue about the fact that she has HIV, he was mm. just more focused on the fact that why were you not transparent honest with me? It, yeah. Why were you not honest ab- with me about that? And I think that's just at least nice to see a positive outcome rather mm. than just like Negative. the bad reactions this, that people might yeah, expect. There's the stigma, the stigma, expected reaction. I think yeah. that I think I have a little side question here. Yeah. How early do you think she should have told him? About her Ooh, HIV status. I was thinking from. Oof. I remember when they asked that question, in MTV. Sugar, yeah, because like, yeah. on one hand, you would want to be honest from the very beginning. On the other hand, you don't know if the person you're meeting is genuine. Yeah, with their feelings towards yeah. you, and if they're not gonna go and spread some some bad even make the add salt to the wound and yeah. add like some some salt and, and just spread bad rumors about you mm-hmm. stigmatizing you even further yeah so when is the right time to tell i mean i think yeah obviously no one can force you to like disclose your status and all these things mm. but when i was watching her i was kind of like really hoping she'd say something before they had sex before they had definitely like yeah. obviously not a first date conversation first, you know, if you don't want it to be if you want it to be that's that's you you know mm-hmm. what i mean because i was thinking if he reacted badly then he wasn't meant for you anyway he yeah. if he's the right one then they will deal with the conversation very maturely mm-hmm. so yeah. i think it's honestly up to the person when they want to have the conversation, mm-hmm. but I do think like at least before you have before sex you get the first time, yeah, because you're putting the other person at risk. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, exactly. Okay, but yeah, honestly, I feel like we could probably talk about uh, MTV Sugar <laughs> all day if we could. Um, but I guess just to wrap it up, mm-hmm. um, I just wanted to find out what were your overall thoughts of the season. I guess if you had to rate it. On a scale of 1 to 10? Yeah. I would give this season a 7.5. A 7.4. 7.5. We would say 8, but they haven't released the episodes yet, so I reduced a few points there. Okay. Um, But I would give it, yeah, some of the seven have an 8 because it's still overall first class. Great show. Yeah. Um, However, I would like to see more consistency with the episode release. <laughs> We're waiting. Please. I beg. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and um i think in general it was a very positive outlook on things the beginning was very emotional the ending also very emotional so great work mtv sugar yeah um i totally agree with you i mean not necessarily on the rating i think if i was going to give it a rating out of 10 i'd probably give it a good seven Oh wow! Okay. I think it's seven. I mean, it's still it's still like a, in you know a class, but I think I just deducted points mm-hmm. from the COVID storyline. That was just oh. a little like <laughs> it was just like clunkily put in there. In there, in my opinion. But honestly, top marks for just the execution, the mm-hmm. acting. I loved all the characters, and again, entertaining, and I'm learning something. So Absolutely. 
all the points for that. Mm -hmm. I guess we'll just wrap it up here. Those are our thoughts on MTV Sugar Niger Season 5. If you haven't watched it, I hope we've convinced you to watch it now. Go, Go check ahead. it out. Check it out. Support Global Health Drama Series. <laughs> <laughs> A new type of global health intervention. It's you know, go pitch it to Dr. Tredros. <laughs> and and, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. On that note, remember to always follow us on our socials, like and subscribe, give us a five-star review, all of the love. Listen to us on World Health Investigation as you are currently on YouTube. If you're not, please make sure you press the YouTube. Click on the YouTube link. Um, we have all our socials described as Edna Lovely said right here at WHI underscore podcast on Twitter, mm -hmm. Instagram, and TikTok. Okay, if you want to see us do small, small banter banter, go on there. Yep. If you want to find us on LinkedIn as well, we keep it professional for the professional babe World Health Investigation. Thank you very much for listening and have a lovely, lovely rest of the week and end of the, the year. year. <laughs> Bye. Bye.